Well, welcome back to what will be the first episode of the Turbo Technics Range Rover series. Um, so, I uh, sorry, I may look a bit homeless. Um, for any of you in the UK, we're still currently in lockdown, so getting haircuts if possible. But yeah, so she's here, she's pretty. I've now driven her for, well, only about 40 miles now um, in the week I've had it. And it returns about 7.7 .7 miles a gallon around here. Um, <laughs> Obviously, it's not, not motorway miles around here. A bit different to that. So, I don't care. I love it. It's an absolute machine. Even if something else does break, I'm trying to get into it. But what I want to do is I want to clean it up a bit, so we'll have a look in a minute. If any of you remember from the last video, um, well, the bodywork's not great on here. Nothing's great. It needs a massive tidy up, in all in all. But, just get into the thing. One hand. There. Have a look at the bait. She's a bit of a mess in here. Now, for those of you who do watch the channel regularly, um, I don't like messy bays. So we're gonna have to sort this out, which is first on the list, because I wanna have a look in here and see what's what. Um, I know quite a few other people also are interested in to see what's what on the Turbo Technics Range Rover, because they're, they're quite rare. Um, there's nothing on Google about them, pretty much. Uh, no one else seems to really have one. Oh god. I'm just trying to do this one hand a minute. It's not right, but well. <laughs> so it'd be nice to kind of see what they've done with it, really, and get it tidied up. Uh, there we go, we have got the Turbotonix plate bed, so it's genuine. Uh, it's got the, I guess, the Land Rover 3 system in it. To uh, fit by TT so Turbotonix South, maybe? I don't know. So, uh, um, whatever TT153 turbo is, gotta work out what that is. Uh, it's done on just into 93. Uh, 70S plugs. Ooh. I think that's what I want running in the Capri in the Golf now. Uh, and normally they haven't put any of the ignition settings on it or other details. But yeah, that's quite, quite rare. So, I'm gonna get this tidied up in a minute, which is gonna be a fairly big job. And then we can see what we're working with. Because someone's not cleaned it in years. Oh, I'll see you shortly. Well, roll along a few hours later. That's the engine bay washed. Um, <laughs> breakdown sorted out and all sorts of other things. Um, so I haven't really been able to play with it. But here we go. So, first off, couldn't really tell before that these hoses were blue. But that built Hamber Surfex HD worked wonders and all them. Got a turbo there. I haven't seen actually any numbers yet on it. Or uh, it's a Garrett turbo, turbo, so it's good. But I might try to dig some numbers off at a minute and see what it is. Got that. Got the majority of the crap off the engine. Um, there's still lots more cleaning to be done, but it's no longer absolutely filthy in here. It's just dirty as opposed to filthy. Where do I start? So what's wrong? Well, should we start with what's right? Because <laughs> there's not much. So first off, we got all the all the usual around the bonnet. Seems to be a lot of um, surface rust, which doesn't appear to be too deep, luckily. So we can we can clean it back, treat it, and it should be fine. Hopefully, anyway, because the rest of the bonnet is actually quite tidy. Now down here, there's some marks on the water bottle. Now I kind of wonder what they were, and I found out why. There's been a freaking bay fire here on the wiring. So something along the line here has caused a fire. Uh, melted this hose here, which I haven't know what it does yet, it's blanked off. Uh, melted the wire in here, which might well be for the taco maybe, I'm not sure we got... Uh, it comes here... Yeah, might well be one of the taco hoses. Hoses wires, as to why that intermittently works. So that's been melted off there, which isn't ideal. What else we got here? Uh, we got this box here, which I have no idea what it is yet. It's broken off. Must do something, because that's connected to the coil, positive, negative, and actual ground as well. Uh, coming here, we've got joints all over the wiring, so it's... <laughs> my god. It's going down to... I don't know what that is, to be fair. Down there. <laughs> that, we've got cables again, hanging out, doing all sorts. We've got the washer pump here, just floating around. We've got this vacuum canister. Well, that's doing nothing at a minute, that's not even plumbed in. So that's no use. We've got another connector here. Don't know what that does. Uh, we've got some wire in here, it's been chucked through the 
slam panel there very dodgily. <laughs> That's probably going to be for the new headlights, I guess, so that needs to be sorted out properly. There. Behind the washer bottle, we've got this connector here, which is just. Well, yeah, that speaks for itself. Um, more crap there as well. More crap that's actually connected. Coming around here now, we've got this one as well. So, this is a little potentiometer in the wiring loom in the engine bay. So, what the hell is that doing? Has someone added that to trick the temperature sensor maybe to adjust the fueling? That might explain that maybe. Um, is that what Turbo Technics done? I hope not, but maybe. So we're gonna have to work out what the hell that is. Uh, I'd like to know what that little sensor is. We've got another little sensor there on the plenum. Interesting. Looks kind of standard though. Uh, again, more joints where they've had to extend the wiring around because the plenum should be the other way around. But with the turbo, it's sort of all that. Uh, we've got a little. Well, to be fair, it looks like a thermal cutout to me from like a heater but some kind of temperature sensor or it does look like a thermal cutout so we've got a temperature switch there around this side uh, battery tray is fairly solid does need treating and sorting out oh that would be where the AC used to go that copper pipe there has been crushed off and cut so I oh yeah the AC condenser or whatever it is it's still actually in there it's a shame I wouldn't mind having AC this absolute mess of wiring again. It all needs to be tidied up and sorted out. More tape and joints. Fantastic. We've got an ABS pump here. Uh, I can tell it had a completely legit MOT. It's just not mounted anywhere. Excellent. Uh, that just needs a clean up there. Yeah, not too shabby. There's something here which appears to be a map sensor. Not sure that's standard or not. And then coming around to the turbo setup and all that. Well, we, ah, no, actually, we missed more things. So, down here, we've got um, two cut cables, another plug not doing anything. Tape that to the loom there. We've got a new bit of hose here, so I'm going in somewhere. But this is a uh, water line, which is currently leaking anyway from the radiator. And that goes, I guess, to the back of the head or something. And also goes to the Turbo. What else we got here? Mess, mess, mess. That's actually connected. That must be the actual temperature sensor for the engine. If I say that, we got two of them for some reason. And the oil pressure sensor down there, I'm assuming. Oh, why is it leaking in? Oh. <laughs> leaking coolant from there as well. Oh, yeah, right up there. Fantastic. It's another issue. So that's, I think, most of the issues for the engine bay found so far. That mm, pretty much covers it. I'd like to know what a lot of this electric does, so I'm going to have to get some of the original Range Rover wiring diagrams and then compare them to what I've actually got in the bay to try and work out what the Turbo Technics bits are. So that's that. What else we got? Well, we've got every single perishable underneath the car is buggered so every bush, all that, the whole lot's knackered to shocks so they're all old, knackered uh, the tyres are a bit perished so they need sorting out as well uh, on the front here there has been some rubbing of the tyres in the arch so they're, well, to be fair there shouldn't be any issue with that but they are slightly too big or sticking out slightly too far underneath both of these side steps is rotten so that either needs replacing or taking off. All the paintwork throughout the body is fucked. Whether it's lacquer coming off, well, up top here we've got none at all. Whether it's, yeah, the lacquer coming off, uh, dents, dings, a bit of aluminium corrosion, uh, some trim damaged or missing. This sad uh, bit up here, which I'll have to use the, the one on the other Range Rover I've got, is much better than that. So I'll use that. Poor old tailgate has had a bit of heavy use. Um, all the number plates are screwed. Bit of surface rust on the bumper there, which, to be fair, the bumper's actually straight, pretty much. So I wouldn't mind maybe just treating it and reusing that. We'll see, unless it's cheap enough to get another one. Uh, we got dirt or delamination on the 
tailgate. The straps are a bit weak. As for the actual tailgate itself, it's not fantastic. So, yeah, I'm gonna have to work out what I'm gonna do about that. Whether part to change or whether I have to change the whole tailgate, I'm not sure yet, but she's a bit buggered. It's another issue. Oh, there we go. They don't close on most Range Rovers, so that's at least one bonus there. Fuel filler cap open, so we've got the trim missing down here, which is in the boot, but it's broken. The end caps of the bumpers are actually quite tidy. I'm quite happy with that. The underside is tidy for a Range Rover Classic, but not perfect. So both front bulkhead body mounts are gone. Uh, a bit of surface on the two front body mounts. Uh, the rear cross member for tailgate has got a, needs to got a bit of a hole in it. The driver's fit well, it's got a few holes in it. And either side of the boot floor has some little holes. So there's still enough to do there. I think it's gonna be an engine out job to do the rest, to do them um, bulkhead body mounts because that's gonna be a pain in the ass. And it gives me a good excuse to take the engine out. Typical Range Rover, all the doors are difficult to get into. But as a result, obviously over the years, the door has been not sure we can see this. Dented. Where well, it's been pushing out to open it up. So someone's like put their knee against that there and it's all bent there and that's all fucked there. Someone's been pushing on the handle. So that all needs to be sorted out, which is a pain. That's the inside. She's actually quite tidy. Not perfect by any means, but pretty good to be fair. Um and I saw clean up and it'll probably come up fairly good. I've got to suss out the, this one here, work out how this works, because I'm sure there's some cables to another one. I don't see any cables going to this one. So I'm not sure how it works. So we've got to try and work it out. No idea. Have a look at that. Once again, someone's put a lamp that's too hot in here or it's been left on, it's melted the casing, so we need a new one of them. The sunroof doesn't do anything, doesn't operate, which is a pain. We've got to fix that. Typically, the headlining, that's all saggy. But it's actually in fairly good nick, just saggy. So I need to work out what's gonna happen with that. This bit of, that's not in good condition. That seems to have been sat and got damp and it's all rusted through the material. So that either needs replacing or recovering or one or the other of that. Well, so I haven't actually tested the rear window de uh, window heater and the front windscreen heater as well. But when I press the buttons, I can hear the alternator sort of take on further load. So that means they should be working, which is nice because I kind of want the front heated windscreen. It's a nice little feature. The lights and all the stalks and that all light up fine. We haven't got very much backlighting down here, so I've got to fix that. Uh, the blower motor wise, some of it works. But I can't seem to get any hot air. I can't get any blowers out the top vents. So I've got to suss that out. Mirrors. Passenger side works fine. Driver side has started working, but it'll only go up and down. Even if you press left and right. So that's got to be sorted. Fuel gauge. Full tank seems to read three quarters per tank. That's got to be sorted. Uh, yeah, the RPM, like I said, hopefully due to burnt out cable. Uh, some t well, mostly works, but sometimes doesn't work. Uh, we've also got the engine, occasionally I'm now getting a fluctuating sort of a high RPM, so it can go anywhere up to 1,000 to 2,000 RPM by itself. <laughs> Not ideal. Uh, cruise I haven't tested, but apparently works. Lights work, but they need a bunch of adjusting, because they're looking wrong places at the moment. Uh, radio works, to be fair. Clock, I have no idea. She goes in low and high, so that's a bonus. Um, what else? Ah, electric seats. So electric seats do work, at least on the driver's side here. Um, although, to be fair, that's actually broken off down there. And that needs to be fixed. Uh, this side isn't broken off, but when Matey was cleaning it, the last owner, he managed to break one of the switches. So it only goes forwards, not backwards. Uh, on the tilt settings anyway. So that's annoying. Audio-wise, I've just noticed actually it's got two speakers per door card. 
they're pretty shit. So they need sorting out. Electric windows do work, but the passenger side one doesn't function properly because the regulator screws. So I've got a new regulator in the back for that. Um, shut up, lambs. Rear, mm, fairly tidy, but it's, again, the lever's not been looked after. It's got like, bits of, um, it's got some paints on here, so I need to get all that restored and brought back nicely. Ooh, that must then be most of it. So there's good and bad things with this one. Compared to the last one, she's an absolute gem, but there's just more things appearing. Every time I jump in the vehicle, there's nothing broken, nothing dodgy found. So it's going to be a lot more work than anticipated. Um, it's going to be worth it, but that is it's life. So it's you buy a used car, and it never turns out to be what it's meant to be. Oh, well, we've got that trim down there's broken as well, looks like, or it's bent up. Uh, the surround for the back of the cluster, that's all loose as well. Glove box, that's fine. Cut bolts are a bit shit, though. Yeah, she does, though, to be fair, start pretty well until I wa wash too much electrics. That caused a few issues. So, ABS pump accumulator screwed, and there's something wrong with the ABS as well because the ABS lights on, and it shouldn't be. Goes intermittently on and off. But that V8, that sounds very nice. So, that's the main thing she's got going for it at the minute is that, that sound in the turbo. She does pull well, and the automatic gearbox feels really nice. So, that's, that's hopeful. So, yeah, if you're happy with the video, why not drop a like, leave me a comment, tell me what you think. Even if you aren't happy with the video, tell me what you think. I'm Open to some criticism. If you maybe want to follow the series, which is going to be obviously inevitably coming up, uh, maybe not for a few weeks at least, starting um, due to other projects and commitments, but it's going to be cracking on hopefully fairly soon. If you want to follow it, then subscribe to the channel. Share this on Facebook if you want, and um, yeah, hopefully I'll see you again next time. Cheers. Bye.